Hi guys, General Splatten here. I want to continue on with the reviews and today I'll be reviewing the PC game Dawn of War 2. This is a real-time strategy game published by or put out by THQ and Relic. Uh, it's a game that I think is well worth your time and effort. Uh, to begin with, I want to talk about the main drawback associated with the game. It's not the game itself. It's uh, something that you have to do uh, to get the game to play. This game, if you look on the back, you'll see an icon that says Steam Works right there. Uh, what that is talking about is Valve, a, a publisher and developer of games, has its online service called, that many of you know about, uh, called Steam. Sort of like an internet store where you can uh, buy uh, games and download them, download levels and maps and whatnot. Well, uh, to activate this game, you already got to have an account with Steam or you got to create an account. Now, it is free, but the only way that you can play this game is that you've got to go online and launch the game through Steam. In other words, you just can't play this game uh, by yourself in your home. You've got to use an outside source to be able to play this game. And as far as review purposes, I hate that. I think that is a stupid way for a game company to put their product out there. And that anytime, you know, what happened to the days where you go to a store, buy a game, take it home, and play it? You know, <laughs> where's the sense in that? You know, goodness. Where you just bought a product and it was yours and you used it, and when you got through with it, you moved on to something else. Well, it's not so with this. I hate the fact that if I'm sitting in my home by myself and I want to play this game, and I only play the single player portions of these games, I never play the multiplayer or LAN. Uh, parties or, or co-op play or anything like that. I always play them by myself. And for me to be at my home by myself wanting to play this game, I still got to go on to Steam and launch the game through there. Otherwise, I won't be able to play. And, and I think that's, a, that's just a stupid way for a game to uh, be published, that you've got to use some kind of outside source just to be able to play it. Uh, there have been times when I've wanted to play the game but was not able to because I... Steam was down or the servers were full or it was just some kind of glitch and I couldn't get the game to activate because there was something wrong with Steam. You know, that's that's a terrible, terrible uh, thing in my opinion. But it's not related to the game and it's not a deal breaker. Uh, obviously, since uh, I'm doing this review uh, and the reason you hear my voice today and I'm on YouTube is because of this game. I hadn't picked up a paintbrush in over 10 years. But because of playing this game, it rekindled my desire to get back into the hobby and collect and paint miniatures once again. So it was a it was a great source of motivation for me to play this game and realize what I was missing in a hobby that I really enjoyed earlier in my life. So it's not a deal breaker as far as the uh, aspect of the uh, Steam service that you've got to use. I just hate it. And, really really don't like it obviously as far as the game it's an, a real time strategy game and it's uh, a game that I think is well worth your attention and here's why uh, first of all you get the uh, DVD you get a 25 page manual or so with some fluff and stuff as far as the multiplayer aspect you get a fold out with the uh, tiers and building trees this is a space marine here uh, of all the upgrades for the bases, the tech trees as far as your units and what you can build and how far they can pro progress and the abilities they will receive. The uh, factions in the uh, game itself, there are four of them. They are the space marines which are represented by the uh, blood ravens. You have orcs, Eldar, and the Tyranids. You only uh, the single portion game. That's the only part of the game that I play. The single portion game is strictly you play the Space Marines. But if you want to play online, you can play any of the uh, four races that come with the game. So it's up to you which ones you want to play. Now, as far as the playing of the game, it is a real time strategy game, but a sort of a misnomer because it's really a tactical game. Because in the single player portion of the campaign, or the game there is no base building it is strictly tactical in the sense that you have a certain number of guys that you take into uh, battle and those guys uh, last you the whole mission 
If they die, then you have to restart the mission. So there's no base building, no micromanagement of resources and figuring out what you're going to build next and what tech tree you're going to pursue. It's strictly a fighting game, and that's what really appeals to me. I don't, For me personally, and this is just a, an opinion portion of it, I don't like base building. I'd rather just get out there with my guys and fight, so this suits me to a T. And I, that's probably why I love it so. Uh, is The game itself, as far as uh, the aspects of the game that make it up, um, Let's talk about the uh, graphics. The graphics are excellent with this game. I would show it to you uh, and play it a little for you, but I can't because m my gaming computer is a 3D enabled computer. I have the NVIDIA 3D vision glasses and the Samsung monitor. So if I tried to show it to you, it all look bur blurry because there's no way I could portray 3D imaging on the, this uh, video. But this is 3D capable right out of the box, and 3D gaming to me is wonderful. I love it. It makes it very, very immersive when you see your guys seem like they actually come to life. I love that aspect of the game. So the uh, graphics are great. There's a lot of detail in the uh, models. You can zoom way down and still see a lot of detail in them and then zoom out. The maps are very large. They're very well done. The, the drawback of the game itself is the limited number of maps. You get six, seven, or eight for the whole uh, campaign. So you're going to be replaying the maps a lot. Um, that is uh, a hindrance to it, but they are very well done. They're very destructible. And uh, you because of the story thread and narrative, you will be doing different things on those maps. So they're, it's not like you're rehashing the same exact mission over and over again there will be progression in other words to it the sound quality is excellent the special effects as far as the explosions uh, are very very well done the um, particle effects the like I said the explosions the smoke the haze everything is top top notch uh, very excellent uh, in that regard the voice acting is very good the people that got to do the uh, voice acting has done a wonderful job the uh, story and plot of the uh, game there's like 25 or so maybe a few more uh, missions uh, excellent uh, excellent story it feels like you're playing the tabletop game it really does so you uh, it just comes to life right before your eyes and it feels like uh, you're actually a space marine in orbit directing your troops <laughs> excuse me now there is an, a great RPG element to to this game in other words uh, these guys start out at level uh, 1 and they progress all the way up to level 20. Uh, you get the whole gamut of the weapons that a Space Marine would use on the tabletop. Bolters, heavy bolters, flamers, the uh, plasma weapons. You get the force weapons, you know, the swords, the hammers, the axes, the shields. You, you get the sniper rifles. Uh, the dread, Dreadnought uh, has other stuff as well. Uh, the people that you will be uh, commanding or you have uh, six units but only four can be on the tabletop at one time you have a force commander you have an assault squad a tactical squad a scout squad and a devastator squad and they also have the dreadnought so you get to pick and choose which uh, forces you want to take on each mission depending on what the mission requirements are so there's a lot of customization though you get all the different weapons that you can upgrade with a, Better weapons become available throughout the game. Uh, better armor comes available throughout the game, so you've got a lot of choices there as far as the way you progress in the game. So there's a lot of customization, a lot of RPG elements as far as picking, picking and choosing which uh, stats you want to increase or enhance uh, because of the uh, points you get to use on your uh, players or your troops. So. Uh, a lot of elements come together to make this an excellent game. Like I said, the sound is great, graphics are great, the uh, voice acting is very well done, the plot is very well done. Uh, it sucks you right in and keeps you there. There's a lot of replayability with this game because you get bonus missions throughout the game that you can do at your leisure, where you can do them or not do them. So there's infinite replayability you, you will be doing the same type missions over and over again but you can still be playing this you know long after you've actually completed the uh, game itself so highly recommended it. it's a wonderful game it's a product that is well worth your time I give it two thumbs up five stars out of five you know ninety percent um, 
it's a game that I think you'll really really enjoy if you like uh, tactical sh uh, shooters or, or real-time strategy you're gonna love this game it is an excellent game it was very well received by the gaming public even for those people that do not play Warhammer 40k or have much exposure to it it's that good a game so I highly recommend it to you it's well worth your time and if you have any thoughts or comments maybe you played it and didn't like it let's talk about it if you got any questions that I didn't cover uh, shoot me a personal message or a comment and um, let's uh, let's just dis discuss it well I ask you please rate and please subscribe and you have any questions I look forward to hearing from you this is General Splatten and I'll talk again